So BTK inhibitors have been used for patients with uh, visa lymphoid malignancy now for almost 10 years. Uh, the first use was mainly in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and mental cell lymphoma, but it's now moving to new uh, visa lymphoma subtypes, including marginal cell lymphoma and uh, lymphoplasma C lymphoma or Valdestrom macroglobulinemia. It was very evident from the beginning when the, uh, the only BTK inhibitor available for clinical trials was ibrutinib, the, the, the toxicity profile may be a may major uh, limiting uh, step in their use. Um, the main biological problem with Ibrutin is that the latter is not a very specific BTK inhibitor. Uh, there's a lot of off-target effects on uh, IATK and FLE3 and many other BTK-like uh, antigens that translates into uh, major side effects. The most common tend to be low-grade. Uh, patients who are on Ibrutin tend to develop hypertension, arthralgia, diarrhea. One thing that we tend to underestimate as clinical investigators are these low-grade adverse events, and we tend to focus a lot of uh, high-grade adverse events events that instead are not very frequent. I'm saying this because um, minor arthralgia or minor diarrhea or difficulty in managing uh, blood pressure, even if minor and mild, uh, may be very meaningful for patients, particularly if they are prolonged over time. As I mentioned, there's instead of a lot of uh, knowledge and interest uh, around the less common but uh, more severe adverse events such as atrial fibrillation or bleeding, and we're all very aware and conscious about those. So in light of this, there's been a lot of interest in trying to develop more specific BDK inhibitors, uh, such as acalabrutin and zanobrutin, both of which are now uh, currently approved by the FDA with multiple indications in the B cell lymphoma field. And new BDK inhibitors, uh, such as pyrtobrutin, for example, are now on the horizon. Uh, in general, um, we tend, if possible, particularly if patients either are older or they have comorbid health conditions, they may overall increase the chance of to avoid the use of ibrutinib and to uh, focus more on the use of more specific BTK inhibitors such as al acalabrutinib or zanubrutinib. Uh, sometimes we may actually switch from one BTK to the other based on intolerance or based on progression. We know very well this is not effective and usually when a patient is um, refractory to a BTK, uh, this tends to be a class uh, effect and will be uh, refractory to any BDK inhibitor. So switching from a BDK inhibitor to the other should mainly be driven by toxicity concerns as opposed to efficacy concerns. Uh, as we develop more and more BDK inhibitors or um, non-covalent BDK inhibitors, we also see uh, better efficacy data. Um, so I think that one on one side, we should all try as clinicians to learn what the most common low-grade adverse events associated with BDK inhibitors are and how to manage those uh, in a multidisciplinary team. Uh, we also need to be aware that um, uh, new agents are being developed and hopefully majority of them will be approved by the FDA and EMA and uh, progressively probably replace the older BDK inhibitors in uh, common practice.